What up, gang? It's your boy Chris Garcia, aka Crypto Godson, coming at you guys again with just a um, simple market breakdown. What I'm thinking about, what I'm looking at, what moves I'm making in the market on today, December 29th, 2020. Um, I also want to make sure, uh, uh, actually, click that like button, click that subscribe button right now if you're new here. And like I said, my name is Chris Garcia, aka Crypto Godson. My uh, whole intent with this channel is to make this journey in crypto a bit easier. Hopefully I can with the experience I've gained uh, since I've been involved in the crypto market since 2017. And, um, um, you know, the insight that I give, I hope can help you guys. And, um, you know, be sure to, you know, reach out with anything specific in the comment section. Also the Telegram group, if you would like any um, particular market breakdowns or explanations, etc. cetera. Um, all right, let's get right into it today. I'm going to be going over, like I said, what I'm looking at, what I'm, uh, what moves I'm making right now. So, uh, and also my bias, what is my bias right now? So first of all, I want to start with uh, the explanation of uh, the Bitcoin shortage. So as you can see here, this article on Coinbase um, says a Bitcoin shortage, a PayPal and Cash App uh, buying more than 100% of new supply. So uh, you still want to pay attention to is this last uh, phrase right here buying more than 100% of new supply. So um, what's going on right now is uh, Bitcoin releases a certain amount. It's literally a flat rate of Bitcoin every day on the market that me and you can buy. But PayPal and Cash App are buying more than are being released per day. So what that means is there's a net negative um, Bitcoin out there on the market with every day that passes. So that means there's going to eventually be a shortage, just like, you know, literally, like you see here, there was a shortage in um, toilet paper during COVID because, you know, we, the customers, bought more than was on the market. And that means the overall demand, you know, supply-demand dynamics, just like in any business, the price will go up if there's more demand, just, just to meet the market. You know, it's, it's going to, there's always equilibrium. The more demand there is, the higher the price is. And um, obviously, it, it can correlate to less supply. And um, this is, you know, from a bird's eye view perspective, um, from 2017 until now, the overall market dynamics have changed drastically because of institutional interest. Like, like it says here, PayPal and Cash App are buying that much. Um, that gives credit, you know, credibility to Bitcoin as a reserve asset, as a store of value asset. And um, I'm particularly interested in all coins because I see there's there's a lot more. Um, you know, asymmetrical uh, potential. You know, there's a lot more upside potential than there is downside potential with low cap, micro cap coins um, like Reserve, uh, you know, Reserve Protocol, uh, which I'll be going over later today. Um, but basically, I want to, you know, let you guys know that there's there has been a huge shift. Institutional buyers are, um, you know, the chain has started. The chain has started, you know, even though we're still at the very, very beginning, the big boys haven't even jumped in yet. Like, you know, that there's not even enough liquidity in the market right now for certain players to even get in the market. Like, that's how small Bitcoin is. But, um, you know, given that PayPal and Cash App are purchasing Bitcoin, that lets us know that there's a level of credibility. And, um, you know, before too long, you know, the regular normal person with a nine to five job, you know, the, the ability to obtain one Bitcoin becomes harder and harder and harder. And before too long, it's going to be out of reach. So um, that's on my mind right now. And I am uh, laser focused on doing whatever it takes to to uh, reach my objective um, and to accumulate as many Bitcoins as I can, um, obviously, while using altcoins to help me accumulate more Bitcoin, not more U.S. dollars, but more Bitcoin as a long term asset um, and as a general way, general wealth asset uh, for my family. And, you know, in my generational, uh, you know, heritage as I, you know, I want to be able to pass that down. Like, um, you know, like certain, certain families pass down cars or certain families, they pass down, you know, a, a ring or jewelry, gold or bonds, houses. I want to pass down Bitcoin. So that's my, that's, you know, I think that's our extraordinary opportunity that this particular generation has, you know, from the ages of, say, even high school age, like 15 to 18, all the way up to like 35. I think this window of, you know, this generation, we have an extraordinary opportunity to accumulate Bitcoin and, um, you know, pass it down to our children 
you know, if you get any older than that or younger than that, you know, you're kind of out of range and you may not understand it fully, but I think this is the perfect opportunity for us to take, you know, to grasp this. And um, uh, that's a concept from the Outliers. You should de- if you haven't read Outliers, that book is life changing. So I would definitely encourage you guys to take advantage of the situation with the whole um, the, the market shift and the market dynamics that are shifting with institutional interest in Bitcoin. So that's kind of the perspective I'm looking at the whole market right now. Um, the whole kind of bias has shifted from being all in on alts, like ready for all season whenever I'm just all in alts. Now it's like, okay, no, 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 I need to focus on Bitcoin because the boat is leaving. Get on the boat before it leaves. So, um, all right, so that's my spill on that. Next, so here is the Bitcoin market cap dominance um, chart. So, um, so this basically breaks down within the whole crypto market, um, how much share is Bitcoin taking up, you know, obviously with respect to the whole market cap. So taking into account all of the other altcoins. So right now we're around, so we're at 70.22. So we're around 70% market cap dominance. And you can see here, if you can look at any visual chart, you see here that we have visited the same level before back here in uh, December, 2017. And then we visited in uh, August, September, 2019. Again, in uh, December 2019, we almost tapped it in May of this year, and now we're tapping 70% uh, right now in December 2020. And this has been a long-term resistance. We're on the weekly chart here. So we have really, we haven't passed 71% since back in July 2017. So if we break 71%, we're going to basically, I mean, our next resistance isn't until about 70, you know, 78, 79%. And that lets us know that historically we reverse at this point. Historically, the market reverses from the 70 to 71% and mark, you know, the uh, Bitcoin dominance heads down and it usually, you know, usually heads down. And that's what we, that's, you know, what traders like me, usually refers to you know usually used as a signal that all season is on the way and that liquidity money is flowing back into all coins but like i just went over there's a you know a market shift going down right now that's never happened before paypal and cash up are buying more bitcoin that is being released per day and that's a new dynamic that hasn't been observed in any of these other you know uh, reversals over here at the 70 71 percent uh, market do- market cap dominance, um, you know, resistance. So, in other words, I'm really watching to see if we break this because it's very likely that we do, given the new market dynamics and the institutional FOMO that basically could be happening. I think it's just a matter of time that we break this. But get, you know, based on what's happened in the past, usually we reverse. And right now, what I'm seeing is evidence that we will reverse based on this resistance. So if you see here, we have a higher high, higher low, higher high. And then right here, we do have a higher low, but it looks like we're failing to basically achieve another higher high. So right now we're still respecting this 70.22 um, uh, mark right here. This, uh, like I said, market cap dominance percentage. So right now I'm trying to see if we're gonna break the 70.22. And then if we break that, Obviously, I'm going to look to see if we break this, this mark right here, 71.96, and see if we still, you know, continue to march to higher highs. But right now, it doesn't look like that way. So I'm really watching this really closely. And if we do break and continue to go higher highs, that's where I'm going to look to scale into alts. And then one alt in particular, that's going to be a reserve protocol. And um, so I'm really bullish on the fundamentals of that one. So let me go to the chart. So this is basically going to be a flip of the chart we just looked at because that's an altcoin and we looked at just now was uh, market cap dominance. So this is reserve rights versus Bitcoin. And so this one is at the bottom, whereas the, you know, the market cap dominance of Bitcoin is at the top. So you, you're battling a resistance over here. You're basically sitting on the support. So usually what happens is, like I said, liquidity would flow into altcoins and that would result 
and a uh, you know a reversal over here, but from going from bearish to bullish. So right here we are respecting. We do have confluence with a, a level right here around 70 sets, particularly uh, 68, 69 sets. So this looks like we're gonna have a reversal. Same thing here. This is a support right here. We kind of broke through, but we didn't have confirmation. It literally reversed right back to it. And it looks like we're about to establish, you know, confirmation that yes, our support is that 68.8 sets line. So that's what I'm watching right now. I want to see if we're gonna bounce off it or um, just go back towards, you know, the 60 sat line, 62 sets. We're gonna go back down here. And so all of this, you know, is in confluence for the most part. And um, particularly, like on the one hour, if you see here, I do have the 50 MA, the moving average for, you know, 50 day, uh, 50 hour moving average and then 200 hour moving average since this is the one hour chart. And another confluence I'm looking for is if we get across. So if this line crosses this line, that's another signal for me. It's not, you know, it's not a, you know, a definite green light, but it's definitely another signal another factor to give me more uh, confluence that I do need to scale in to RSR from BTC. Um, and like I keep saying here, there's a new dynamic here, whereas, you know, we didn't have that much institutional interest. You know, we had never had that many institutional interest in um, Bitcoin ever. So 2020, there's truly a new paradigm being set, um, you know, just like I went over here. So I'm watching all this. I'm being extra cautious, making decisions. Maybe, you know, six months ago, a year ago, I might have just jumped in RSR already. But just because of the new dynamics, I'm a little more cautious. I'm going to look for a little bit more confirmation. Like I said, even the MAs, I'm going to look for a confirmation on the support being established. And then, you know, like I said earlier, I'm also uh, looking at the um, market cap dominance. So I want to make sure I'm looking at that very closely. And another thing. I look at as well is the Ethereum BTC pair because this is the the leading altcoin. Um, it's you know number two in market cap in the whole crypto market. So this is very similar to the RSR chart. There's literally you know a bounce. It was a bounce off of this support. Um, this is a long term support as well. So I see this line right here. This is uh, so we're gonna call that you know 26 sets. So you see 0 0.026479 whatever. Um, uh, we we tapped on it back here December 2017 we almost tapped it in uh September 2018 we tapped it in December 2018 uh December 2017 December 2018 so May 2019 we broke through it back here in July 2019 uh so actually became a resistance in um February 2020 uh, another resistance in uh March 2020 uh, we broke through it in July 2020. So this level has been respected several times and looks like it's being it was respected again in um, basically all of November 2020. And now it appears as though we are flipping support. Well, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're, flip, we're basically respecting support again right here as we did in um, November, basically last month. Looks like we're flipping it again. So it was support, came over here, bounced on it, broke through, basically acted as resistance just here uh, recently. And looks like we're breaking through and establishing as support again. And typically what I'm looking for is another, like this is appears to be a breakthrough and confirmation and a blast off. And then we head into all season, quote unquote. And who knows how long that will last given the, bit, the, the current Bitcoin demand that we're experiencing, but typically um, you know, Bitcoin has had a big run up here. Typically, this means, you know, this chart is telling me that we're about to head upwards and um, liquidity is going to flow into Ethereum from, from Bitcoin, given all of this Bitcoin bullishness, like this chart has been going straight up, straight up, literally since March, since COVID hit, it's been going straight up. So typically, um, you know, with, as with anything, you know, people are going to take profits. They want to take their money. They're going to take their gains. They want to realize their profits. But this one's a little different because Bitcoin has been going up a little more steadily. It's been a little bit more naturally 
than it was, uh, say, for instance, in 2017, where it seemed like it was just going straight up. Like it wasn't even like it didn't seem like there was ever a resistance. It was just straight market, dis- you know, uh, price discovery. And um, matter of fact, I can just show that really quickly. So let's go see this chart right here is straight even basically all the way from 2017, I mean, 2015, all the way through December 2018. I mean, December 2017, it's just parabolic. So let me take this off the log. So this one, yeah, so we got March 2017 all the way through December 2017. We just went straight up. Um, But this one is a little bit more uh, I guess, like I said, a more reliable, more stable run up. Um, even though it doesn't feel like it, it is. Um, I lived through this 2017 time, and there is basically all the dips are being bought by these institutions. And um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so I want to finish off. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, Bitcoin is going up, like I said. And usually what happens is, you know, um, people take the profits in Bitcoin and put those in also like Ethereum and potentially lower caps that has strong fundamentals like Link or uh, or Cardano or like new new assets like Ocean Protocol, Reserve Protocol, DAG, uh, Energy Web. Um, you know, there's different um, apps, you know, alts out there that weren't around in 2017 that could, you know, basically run up crazy and receive, you know, get up to 100x gains. And that's what I'm looking for. So, um, all right, I'm going to stop talking there. So next. Also, what I'm looking for is, um, you know, what fundamentals can I look at that give me more confirmation that, you know, my particular altcoin is going to receive liquidity from Bitcoin after this run up? Like, how do you know that yours, out of all the altcoins out there, how do you know that yours is going to receive that liquidity? Um, So this is one uh, tool here, Um, you know, exchange listing. So Coinbase is... Um, the leading U.S. currency, uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, right now, Coinbase is reviewing a group of crypto assets that could soon make it on their exchange. So right now, there's 14 assets being reviewed. Uh, this article was released this month. So um, one of those is reserve rights. Um, that's one that I'm very bullish on um, fundamentally. And reserve is currently being uh, reviewed. And um, so also one thing giving me confirmation um Bias is confirmation. I mean, Coinbase says that it's planned to support every asset. To me, it's uh, so basically, sorry. Coinbase says it's plans to support every asset that means that meets its technical standards and complies with apl- applicable regulations. So everything that they require, um, technically, you know, every project has to be technically sound. But if the project does meet, you know, all the technical, you know, requirements, they do plan to list everything. So Coinbase is basically telling us that they're not being uh, stingy. So if you meet our requirements, we're going to list you. It's not like back in the day, Coinbase was basically like the blue chip of all coins and Bitcoin, and that was it. Nowadays, if you can meet their technical standards from a developer perspective, they're going to list you. If you abide by all the U.S. regulations, they're going to list you. So they're basically telling us they're not being stingy anymore. And um, they do have a quote here. Over time, we expect our customers around the world will have access through Coinbase platforms to at least 90% of the aggregate market cap of all digital assets in circulation. So Coinbase is telling us they want to list basically everything except, you know, the trash coins uh, to the market, um, you know, on the, the exchange, in the app, and not just on custody, not just on Coinbase Pro, you know, not just for institutional investors, not just for the uh, day traders, but for the everyday retail trader. They want to um, give them access to all the, you know, all coins that they can get their hands on. And with that being said, I think uh, a reserve is more than capable of, you know, meeting the technical standards. Also, given that they have a lot of ties, a lot of the team members have ties uh, to Coinbase. Um, also, reserve was uh, invested in <laughs> by Coinbase Ventures very early on. So I have no doubt, honestly. It would take a lot for Coinbase to really turn down reserve rights. Um, and if you guys don't know, reserve rights is already on the Coinbase custody platform, which is usually like the, the first step out of three to get on the Coinbase app. After that, they get on Coinbase Pro, which is basically a platform for the day traders, like the serious traders that trade every day. And then after that, they usually get listed on the app for retail traders. 
that just want something quick and easy to you know get a hold of crypto on their phone on an app so usually if they're on step one they don't always get to it but usually that's a great sign that you know lets you know that they're gonna get listed on the app so that's what i'm looking for and um like i said if i get these confirmations that i'm looking for on the charts i will be allocating my resources to reserve um reserve and um, like i said i'm going to be looking for this um it's confirmation right here um given the, you know just basic price action so we're going to see if we break if we break the support you know all bets are off i'm staying in bitcoin but if we do get confirmation and we do get follow through you know over here and we break you know this 70 i say the 74 set mark i will be uh actually i'm going to put an alert that's a good thing right there i love alerts use your alerts on trading view definitely going to be allocating assets to reserve. So with that, um, click that like button, click that subscribe button. If you have any other video requests, please let me know. And with that, I'm out.